everybody, Joe Workman here, and this is our last, final, and third video of the Foundation Getting Started videos. Now, if you haven't watched videos one and two, I strongly recommend that you go back and watch them because we're building upon them inside this video right now. Um, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some content to the last page in the project, the third page, which is the Contact Us page. So we're gonna go over and add a simple form and then we're gonna review some other things and see how Foundation can help us with SEO and optimizing our websites for search and search engines. So without further ado, let's jump on in. So here we have the main project file that we've been working on the past couple of videos. And as you see, we haven't added any content to this page. So let's go ahead and start building out a form on this page. So let's open up our stacks and um, just for the sake, I'm actually gonna add just a simple, small little paragraph above the, um, the form, just so it looks, looks nice. Normally you have a little bit of text or something like that before the form, right? Now in an earlier video, I did already change the, um, the header to be, you know, contact us. And again, this is the global header that is saved across all pages using the partial, but the text within it is unique to this one page. Okay, so I've added a paragraph stack. And now let's go ahead and add a form below it. Now for forms, what we're gonna do is you always wanna add a form base stack. And then all of your form is contained within the form base stack. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a simple um, form, a contact us form. So we're gonna get the user's name, email address, and some comments, okay? So we wanna start by using a simple text input and if we drag the text input in, we'll see that it adds, and we're gonna add two text inputs, and then we're gonna add a text area below that, which is the bigger text area. Now, we need a button to submit our form, so we're gonna go up and find a foundation button, and we're gonna drag that into the form as well, okay? So that is the basics of our form. Uh, we have this, all the stacks we need. Uh, let's go ahead and start looking at some of the settings. So first we're gonna actually gonna set up all the field IDs and names and whatnot. So for the first input, this is gonna be our name. So we're gonna put in um, name as the placeholder and then the field name, okay, we're gonna call that, this needs to be unique for each field. Okay, we're gonna call that name, all lowercase. Uh, then here on the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is email address. And then the name is gonna be email. Now the field name should be no spaces, just all characters and, and digits as well as is, is possible. But you should not have any spaces in the field name. It should just be a straight um, you know, word. Something simple, keep it like name, email. If you wanna do first underscore name, last underscore name, things of that nature, you can do that as well. Um, and then on this text area, we're gonna say um, insert your comments here and then we're going to call this field name comments okay and let's make it a little bit bigger let's make it five rows high okay now on the button stack uh we're gonna have to change a couple of the default settings to make it work with a form so in the foundation button stack you'll see that there's a type and when you look at that there is going to be a type form submit and that's what we want right now we want a, a type form submit and then we're gonna change the button text to be submit, okay? And then uh, let's go ahead and actually change our style of the button. I think it would look really nice if we inherited that swatch color that we had set that uses for top bar and for the footers, right? And let's go ahead and jazz it up and we'll actually make it a ghost button. So that looks really nice. It kind of gives you just an outline of the purple. And then when, you, when we hover over it in preview, it'll, it'll look really rich. Okay, so that really sets up all of the fields, right? Really simple. We have a name, email address, users comments. Now, if you want, you can actually set uh, fields to be required as well, right? So if we wanna make sure that these fields are required, uh, inside the name field, if we wanna make sure we have that, we can say validate field, and then we can say required. Now, when you validate a field, you can make sure it's just words. So basically anything, you know, which is probably what you want for a name because names could be various things, okay? And we wanna make sure that it's required. So we check the required box. 
And then you can give it a custom uh, error message that the user will see if they don't fulfill that validation, okay? Uh, next is email address. If we wanna make sure that is required, we can validate that, set that to be required. And then in here, we have an email rule, actually. So you can go ahead and set the rule to email. So now let's jump into the form base stack in all of its settings, okay? So by default, we send an email, and this is really simple to set up. When we go to the email setup, we're gonna wanna make sure the from address, okay? Now, depending on your hosting company, you, you have to use a domain that is actually a domain that's hosted with your host. So like, for example, I would put in support .jo at joeworkman.net, right? If I could type, okay? So because my host is already hosting the joeworkman.net domain, they allow me to send emails from an address that is that domain, right? Now, you could use custom SMTP options as well if you want to use maybe your Gmail account or something of that nature, that is possible. But if you just want to use the built-in mail mechanism that's built into your Apache web server, then you can go ahead and uh, just put in this, use the same domain uh, as the domain that's hosted. Next, you can add a reply to address. So if you if your from address is like a no reply at joeworkman.net, you can actually set a reply address as well. Now the to address, uh, you can, or the address that you want the email to go to, right? Now you can actually set up two different recipients uh, to, be, to be sent here, okay? Now, Let's say for instance, I wanted the customer, the person that actually submitted this email to get a copy of this email. That is possible as well. And the way to do that is to use some built-in um, template variables that we can use. Now, if you remember when we set up these fields for name and email address, we set up the field names to be name and email. So if I want the first email address to be the actual email of the person that filled in the form, I can go ahead and use curly brace, curly brace, email, which is the name of the email address field, and then two curly braces after it. And I can do the same thing with the name. However, obviously I'm gonna be using the name because that is the name of the name field that we set. So curly brace, curly brace, name, and curly brace. Then if we look at our message, we also have message from, and if you notice the default on this is actually already a variable called name, okay? So here we have a message from name. Now maybe if this email was going to that person, you wouldn't wanna have that. You wanna change the subject to be something else, right? Maybe thank you for your message or something of that nature. But really that's the basics. and. Once you publish this, this will submit the form. You should receive the email to the address that you defined inside the stack. Now, in some cases, if you want, you can actually send two completely different emails as well. And that's if you use email setup number two, and the settings here are identical to the ones that we received or in, that we just went over. Now, also, you can create a custom email template. And when you check this custom email template, you can actually define your own custom email here inside the stack. And if you notice here, you can actually define and use the variables from the form inside the email. So in this instance, we're gonna have the, in, the user's name from the, from the form, as well as the comments field inserted into the email. And again, these template variables are curly brace, curly brace, the name of the field, and then close your curly braces. So that basically does it for the basic structure of our site, right? We have now have a uniform site header content area, you know, the outer part of the content area defined, as well as the footer, and they all sync across all of our pages using partials. Now in this video, we went over how to edit a form and create forms. And they're really simple to use. Now, we just use input fields in there, but you can get some, actually some column stacks inside your form base to actually you know, have your form fields laid out in columns. That is definitely possible and it's easy to do. Just drag and drop your column stacks inside the form base and it'll work just as you would expect it to.
Now the form stack actually does a lot of other stuff, such as you know submitting stuff to the SQL databases and whatnot. And you know, look for more advanced tutorials on that or our documentation portal on how to do those things. Now, right now, there's one last piece of a website puzzle that we need before we can really say our website is complete, right? And that's making sure that search engines can actually see our websites, okay? So now let's jump in and see exactly kind of what things we need to tweak to make sure that our websites are performing optimally for search engines. So here we have our homepage. And let's go over some of the raw, really basic things that we need to make sure we have for search engine optimization. Now, obviously built into RapidWeaver, we have the browser title and we should have a browser title set for every single page, okay? So for the homepage, I'm just gonna go ahead and say getting started with foundation. Now for all my sub pages, I wanna make sure they also have browser titles as well as you probably wanna change the default folder names for every single page that you added. So in this particular instance, I want this to be slash about, okay? And our browser title is gonna be about us. And then same thing for your contact form. You wanna make sure you change those from the default values. Now the next thing you wanna make sure is as you're building your content, now we did that during this site is we've added headers, right? So you add headers to kind of divide your content up into sections so that the search engines know exactly kind of what the main topics about a particular web page is, right? Now, the next thing that we, sh we can do is, and this is where foundation comes into help, is there's an SEO helper stack built into foundation. Now, when we add the SEO helper stack to the page, you'll notice there's a small blue button. And when you click on that plus button, you'll see that there are tons of different meta tags that we can add to our web page. So we can add stuff for Facebook and Facebook open graph is kind of an open standard that some more social networks outside of found outside of Facebook actually have um, implemented. So they look for these tags as well if they're available. But when people share your websites on Facebook or if you use the Twitter cards that are here, okay, and people share your websites on Twitter or Facebook, these meta tags describe your website in more detail for those social networks. So it's what image is gonna be displayed, what title, what description, okay, do you actually wanna show when users share a particular web page or any page on your website? We have things like geolocation, where if you are in actual physical location, you can actually put in the GPS coordinates of latitude and longitude for your actual location. This is great if you, for local searches. So if, if you're, let's say a cafe and you're, uh, you, know, you have users that are in your area and that search for cafe, Google will know their location and show your search results as a preference if they are close to you, right? And also on desktop search, you'll see nice location information about your particular site when people search for you. Next, we have robots, which controls whether or not uh, search engines can actually index your site. We have page description, which is normally something that is specific to each page, and it just defines a description that will be displayed in the search engine results about this web page. Next is structured metadata. And this is a, a lot more than, than I'm gonna go over right now, but we have more detailed videos on structured data. But this allows you to really provide rich data snippets about your company, about yourself, to Google and other search engines, okay? Such as, you know, what is my company's logo? What is my company's website? What is my social profile? So if we were to contain, uh, you know, a schema type of social profile, you can actually provide all of your various social networks. So, you know, Tumblr, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, all of those will actually be displayed um, in your in, if someone searches for you on Google. It's really, really great. And last but not least is a new child of, uh, of SEO helper, and that is page speed. Now page speed doesn't have any options, but what it does is it is it analyzes your web page before it sends it to the browser and moves all of the necessary JavaScript to the end of the page but it does give your, your site um, a slightly higher one or two point ranking increases um, for search engines when they analyze you know, the speed page tools and stuff like that, 
this will give your, your, your sites a small bump in page speed, but every little bit counts, right? Now that does it as a just a basic overview of SEO. I mean, SEO is a you know book up unto itself that you know goes into you know what content you know do you use alt tags in your images. There's a lot of data um, for SEO, and some of it's black magic. Some people say this helps, and some people say it doesn't. Right, but what SEO Helper Stack does is it gives you the exact meta tags that you could need to improve your visibility for search engines and social networks. And there's so there's no searching around for what you need. This gives it all in one spot for you, in one convenient location for you to add. Now, if you throw SEO Helper inside of a partial, you can actually share those meta tags across all your site, right? Now, some meta tags, such as these page description, is probably gonna be something that you want specific to each page, right? So that's probably not something that you'll add to a partial, but so you might have some SEO helper stacks in a partial, and then you can have other ones that are specific to the page, right? So this really gives us a lot of flexibility because maybe you don't want location services uh, meta tags on your site. For example, um, this is my office, right? It is, it is my home, and I don't want that geolocation information known by search engines. So I don't have that on my website but I will have information about you know, Facebook. So if people share my websites on Facebook, what information is gonna be shared, okay? On Twitter, right? What's my page description? What is my social profile? What are my social, you know, all my social information about my company and myself, right? So this really gives us a lot of power and flexibility because we can choose exactly what we want from a predefined list of the most popularly known meta tags. So I hope this helps out everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this getting started course. I hope you've gone through all three videos and it's given you a better understanding on how to use Rapweaver 6 and Stacks 3 and Foundation 1.5 to really develop and design powerful websites, right? And easily as well. As you saw, it was a little bit of work in the first video to get all of our page done, right? But then in the second video, we you know standardized all of that across our entire website really quickly using partials. And then this last one, we saw how easy it is to create forms, which everyone wants a form, right? And then how to optimize our sites easier using SEO Helper. So I hope this helps you out. I hope that you enjoy it and I hope you love foundation and go forth and make your websites great. Thanks everybody, bye.